Hi there, Martin here. Thank you for joining me once again for another turning video. Um, thank you for all of your recent comments and stuff um, on the last few videos that I've put up. Um, they've been great to read um, and I think I've replied to pretty much everybody now. Uh, today's project is an 8 inch cherry bowl which I was going to call Love and Hate because it was such a pain to turn. You would not believe it, but you, you get an idea of how frustrating it's been uh, in the video. Um, but now it's finished with all of the texturing and the colouring and the scorching um, that I did to it around the outside that's been dremeled, scorched, coloured, gold gilted. I basically, I let rip at this piece of wood because it was annoying me so much that um, I thought, right, I'm going to make something beautiful out of you, but I'm going to vent my anger in the process. So that's what I did. Uh, and here it is. But I can't call it love and hate anymore. Um, uh, it looks fairly South American, so I think it's going to have to be Aztec angst. So if you have subscribed to my channel recently, uh, thank you very much. I hope you're finding um, the videos and stuff um, entertaining and inspirational. Um, if you've left a comment recently, thank you very much indeed for that too. But for now, here is Aztec angst. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. very much like to turn a beautiful bowl out of this piece of wood, but this piece of wood has proved to be a massive pain in the backside. I went to put it on the worm screw so I could put it on the chuck to turn the bottom of the bowl, and as you can see I had a little bit of luck, but then it started slipping. So I dug out the inside where I might be able to get a better hold with the worm screw on the chuck, but it didn't work. So now, I'm going to faceplate this piece of wood with some big old wood screws. And in true Martin style, I've got no idea how this is going to turn out. Um, I'm going to call the piece Love and Hate, because at the moment I hate this piece of wood, but at the same time I love it because it's cherry. So we're going to see exactly what happens with this piece of wood um, and I should think it will involve texturing, scorching and colouring um, and generally being a little bit cross with it just to see what happens. So let's screw this, um, let's screw the faceplate to it and um, get turning. Right, faceplate is on. Um, I've got some very sturdy screws in there. Um, I haven't got space for any more. Um, but what I have got here is a little spacer just to bring the faceplate up on this side a little bit, so it's um, a little bit, um, a little bit more square. Even though I'm very unimpressed with this particular piece of wood at the moment, um, I still have to be, I still have to be very respectful of it because it is a spinning piece of wood um, that won't forgive me. Um, if I do something wrong, or too rash, too quickly, or too hard. So I've got to be very careful with it, um, whilst I get it round, and then once it's round and I've got the shape, uh, then I can let loose with the Dremel and really, really give it what's for. So let's get it started. Now I've got it fairly round, or round as I need it, I can start shaping now.
This piece just keeps on testing my patience. The bark, the faceplate's still solid. So, what I'm going to do is create a slightly different bowl, not with a natural edge, but um, finish turning the bottom of the bowl here. But I'm going to I'm going to cut the bowl off when I turn it round in the chuck. I'm going to cut the bowl down to down to roughly here. Can you see that mark? So where the bark ends, basically. Um, so I'm going to lose all this and just end up with a smaller bowl. Hey ho! Right, let me finish this and then I'll get on with. Um, texturing and arguing with the bottom. But what I'm going to do first is start the rim of the bowl by taking a square end scraper and just putting it in, putting it in here um, so I know where my rim is going to be. This, um, where this trench is um, is going to be the rim of the bowl um, there's a little bit of punky stuff here which I'll fill up with some CA glue um, yeah it's just there so I'll put some CA some thin CA glue in there which will um, just soak in And still, the piece is testing my patience. I can't believe how much this piece is winding me up. Um, it's now starting to slip, only a little bit, on the um, um, on the faceplate. Only a little bit, but enough to absolutely wind me up something chronic. So here's the Dremel. Here's the Dremel, and I'm going to attack it. <laughs> Frankly, um, yeah, let's let, let, let's see what happens. So I'm going to run the lathe really slow, as slow as it will go. Well, that's not as slow as it will go, but it will do for a minute. Dremel is trying to wind me up. The bit keeps falling out. Urgh! I'm going to have a break and then I'm going to come back and probably set fire to it. Right, I've 
had a break um, and I'm back again. Um, so here we go with some more venting of frustration. <laughs> As you can see, I am just attacking this thing kind of randomly, um, but it feels good. Change the tip again to something a bit finer. That's quite a fine, quite a fine tip. So let's see. side of this piece um, and re remembering the lesson from Golden Fire um, a few weeks ago um, is kind of knowing when to stop um, and as I am venting some frustrations on this piece um, and the frustrations are mainly caused by the actual piece itself um, I might have gone a little bit too far um, but I haven't finished yet um, so it is quite important to know when to stop, um, but I, I, as I said, I haven't finished yet. Right, I'm going to burnish off the um, burnish off the the tear out from the Dremel. That feels okay. I've got to get the blowtorch on it now, so I need to have a tidy up um, of the lathe, a sweep, a brush down, um, and then I'm going to get the torch out. Ah. Hmm. What I want to do here is just scorch the high points, because there's quite a lot of sort of peaks and troughs um, around here. So with the blowtorch, and this is fairly wet cherry as well, by the way, which may not may not appreciate being burnt, but again we'll see. So what I want to do is just get the troughs and leave, sorry, just get the peaks and leave the troughs um, as much as possible so I can then add some colour into the troughs. And I get just the peaks by going in, by attacking the wood at an angle. And I think what's going to happen first is any remaining tear out that wasn't caught by the burnishing is going to burn away first
just moved the uh, camera around a little bit so you can see um, a bit better um, the uh, the scorched texture um, it's actually come out really quite nice um, I'm surprised to be honest um, so what I'm going to do next is get the airbrush um, and do some kind of randomy colours um, kind of all around it uh, Right, one airbrush with red in, and I'm literally just going to spray sort of kind of big blobs, um, fading out to nothing, and then moving around and sort of putting in another colour, I think, and just sort of playing with it um, as I normally do. So here comes the colour. I'm really not going to worry too much about the about how it looks or anything like that because as you can probably tell already the piece is fairly fairly kind of random When I change with the uh, with this airbrush, it's a it's a siphon feed brush, so I can just take the color color pot off the bottom, let it drain out of the of the tube, and then change the color. And I'm going to go for orange this time, and then slip the orange bottle on. <laughs> Remember. When you've got gloves on, turn it by the turn the piece by the chuck, not by holding the actual piece itself. take some I think 240 paper to it yeah I'm going to take some 240 paper no I'm going to chicken out with that I'm going to take some 320 paper just to rub it back a bit Probably thinking this looks a right mess, and to be honest, I'm beginning to think that too. Yep, that's fine. I'm not going to do any more on that, but I, um, I'm going to rub some gilt on it now, you know. Right, so now I just want a hint. Hopefully, just a hint of guilt. And believe me, I'm feeling very guilty about, at the moment about possibly trashing this piece completely. Well, it's a little bit more than it. What a debacle. Um, okay. I'm kind of happy with the outside. Now I'm going to reverse it in the chuck. Um, get it off the faceplate, reverse it in the chuck, and uh, do the inside. It's backwards, or it's the, the other way around in the chuck, um, and I have taken off the, the natural edge bit. And now I'm looking at the piece, 
I actually think it might turn out okay. Um, but I'm not going to do any finishing to the outside, um, as it were, just yet, because um, I want to let the uh, gold gilt dry. So now I need to turn the inside um, of the bowl, um, and I don't know yet how wide I want the walls to be. Uh, but following a comment on um, YouTube the other day, uh, I should be turning walls thinner than 10 millimeters all the time. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's see. I will start to turn and then we'll see how it looks. <laughs> side turned um, and I'm going to leave it natural so you've got the love and the hate bit um, I could call it Marmite of course because you either love it or hate it um, but I don't know so I'm going to sand I'm going to hand sand most of this now because I've run out of um, oh need to take the scraper just to that bit so I'll take that I'll take the scraper to that bit um, yeah I'll take the scraper to that bit and then sand it back um, and then apply the finish. <clears throat> it's getting late, I've got a runny nose um, and I've kind of nearly finished. But I'm not quite happy with it. You're going to hate me for this but I'm going to scorch the rim. I've got the lathe going as slow as I can get it. You can probably see that the wall, that the rim varies in thickness a little bit. Um, and I think that was probably because um, it slipped on the, it slipped on the uh, faceplate. So right, I've got the lathe going nice and slow and I want to get a, a faded scorch down into the bowl a little bit, I hope. Okay, I'm going to have to do it by hand. Which is kind of scary. Of course it cracks. Of course it blasted well cracks. Should have known better. Good, right, the sanding sealer next. The cellulose sanding sealer. Because there's no colour on the inside of the bowl. Cellulose sealer and thinners mixed at 60-40 as recommended by Mike Walt in a video that I watched oh, over a year ago now. There. That'll do for the sanding sealer. Let that, let that dry off. Cut it back with um, 00, 00 wire wool. 
and then a coat or two of Hampshire sheen. Lovely. Don't need an awful lot. That's probably too much. Oh! Here's one thing I have figured out with Hampshire sheen recently. As you see these little hairline cracks down here. If you rub Hampshire sheen into it, it actually fills them. So you can use Hampshire sheen as a hairline crack filler too. Which I hadn't realised you could do until yesterday. So rub Hampshire sheen into the hairline cracks and it feels nice and smooth again. Or at least hides them a little bit. And then buff it up with the rate with the lathe running nice and quickly. Lovely job. I like that. And here we go. We're finished. Um, after I put the Hampshire sheen on the inside, um, I put a micro crystalline wax um, on the outside over the top of the gold gilt, just to give it a little bit of protection. Um, but let me just show you round the the, um, the edge of the bowl. I hope you can see the different colours and stuff um, in there, and how they've all kind of blended blended together. But you know, I can't. I don't feel I can call this piece love and hate anymore. Um, although it was a real pain in the backside to turn, as you saw, um, I think the way it's turned out is a bit kind of, um, I don't know, maybe South American. So, um, to reflect the frustrations and stuff of actually turning this piece, I think I'm going to call it Aztec Angst. Yeah, why not? That'll do. Aztec Angst. Um, and, uh, yeah... So, yep, there we go. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, then um, then please do so. I post at least one video a week on a Friday. Um, and um, also, um, I do my best to post a project video like this one too, um, earlier in the week, normally Tuesday or Wednesday. So that's it. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I'll look forward to seeing you on Friday for Turner's Journey, episode 12.